Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show off my new custom workspace for Corel Painter 2018. Many of you are probably already familiar with my Corel Painter workspaces, but if you're not, the workspace is basically an arrangement of all the tools and brushes that I use in Corel Painter. And it's arranged in a way that I really like and I find very comfortable to work with. And if you like to follow along with my tutorials, then all of the brushes that I use in those videos can be found here and everything will be in a similar location in the workspace as it is in my video tutorials. So before we get into the details of the workspace, I just really quickly want to show you where you can download the workspace from. You can download the workspace from AaronRutten.com, and then on the main page you'll want to look for Painter Workspace. You can also find that in the menu here. That'll take you to the main page for the custom workspace. Now in order to download this workspace, you must become my VIP patron on Patreon.com slash AaronRutten. I won't go into huge detail about what Patreon is here, but if you want to learn more about Patreon, you can check out my Patreon tutorial here. But if you're ready to become my patron and download the workspace, then you'll go ahead and click on this button that says Get Aaron's Painter 2018 Workspace. And that's going to take you to the Patreon website. And right now, this post which shows how to download the workspace is locked. You can go ahead and unlock it now. And then you'll choose VIP for your reward tier. You'll see that you get access to the workspace and brushes, plus a whole bunch of other rewards. Go ahead and click on continue, and then you can finish the sign up process. Once you've become my patron, you want to go back to that page, so just go back to this link here. Then you'll be able to see the unlocked post, and this is going to describe how to download the workspace. It's going to give you a link to the workspace download page, and it'll give you details and instructions about the workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link to go to the workspace download page. And this page is password protected, but what's important to note, and that's mentioned in the instructions on this page, is that there's a password that changes each month. The password is located on this page here, and so you'll want to enter that password here on the Workspace Download page. So I'll go ahead and enter the password for this month, and that takes us to the download page. So now we can download the entire Corel Painter 2018 workspace, which is a zip file, and that contains all of the brushes and features that we're going to be taking a look at here in a minute. It's the whole package bundled together, but I also offer the individual brushes and individual palettes and features as well. So here I have just the new brushes that I created in July. There's also some very helpful guide videos here. I recommend that you watch all of these because they're going to answer a lot of your questions about how to install the workspace and content. If I scroll on down, I can search for a brush with Control F. So for example, I can hit Control F and then I can type in pepper and it's going to highlight the pepper spray brush. I can also quickly navigate to certain categories if I want to quickly navigate to watercolor. I can do that. And I can go back to the top. There's instructions about how to download individual brushes, how to download the icons, how to download the box files. The box files are a palette that contains all of the brushes that you see in this particular category. I'm no longer offering brush categories because those are just not very efficient for me anymore. And then here it mentions the compatibility. Now most of these brushes are going to be compatible with older versions of Painter unless they're marked otherwise. None of these brushes are compatible with Curl Painter Essentials. So what that means is if it says 2017 next to the brush, that brush is only going to work with Corel Painter 2017 and later. If it says 2018, it's only going to work with Corel Painter 2018 and later. If it doesn't say anything, there's a good chance that it'll work with just about any version of Painter. So if I wanted to download the palette box, I could click here and download the palette box for the rendering palette. That's all these brushes here. Or I could download the individual brushes. For example, I could download the Dab Chalk Eraser. And then you can see there's all of the other categories here. If I jump back over to Curl Painter, you can see that those are individual palettes. Here's rendering, blenders, palette knives, thick paint, texture, etc. Now over here on the right, I have some image shows nozzles, and these are kind of like brushes, but they're a special kind of brush called a nozzle. And if I scroll on down a little bit here, I will eventually find the nozzles area. There's instructions on how to install the nozzles and how to use them. So again, you'll want to watch these so that you know how to use these nozzles. And then you can see each nozzle. I have the nozzle libraries that you can download, or you can download the individual nozzles. Again, if I go back to Painter, you can see all of those nozzles are here in my nozzle libraries palette. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, then there's the shortcuts palette, nine step value scale, paper library, and keyboard shortcuts. Here's the shortcuts bar up here. Here's the nine step value scale. If we look in the paper libraries, here's the organismal paper textures. And then, of course, saved with the workspace are the custom keyboard shortcuts I created. So basically, long story short, if you want this whole workspace here set up the way I have it and you don't want to bother installing anything else, then just download the entire workspace. However, if you have your own workspace and you just want to add my content to your workspace, 
then you can download the individual brushes or the box files or any of the other content offered on this page. So now that we know how to download the workspace and brushes, let's take a quick tour of what the workspace can do. So over here on the left, I have my custom palettes, which have custom brush icons. And most of these are brushes that I use on a regular basis, but there's also some specialty brushes. Now, if you double click on the tab name here, you can collapse and expand it to make more room on your screen. For example, I can open the flow maps and the grain. If I want to save some space, I can condense some of this stuff down. Over here, we have some custom palette drawers, and those collapse and expand the same way by double clicking on the tab. And then within those, there's also more tabs here. So you can see I can get to a lot of content and then go ahead and close it up. Now, I'm not going to go through every single feature here, but I will give you a pretty decent overview. As I mentioned earlier, I have the value scale here, which is a nine step value scale. This helps you easily pick different shades of black and white. Hiding next to the layers, I have the layout grid, which helps me plot out my compositions. I also have define proportion. I've added stroke attributes here because you can use stroke attributes with brushes like the image hose nozzles and other brushes. And then the only thing new up here in the shortcuts that I've added since Corel Painter 2018 is the new thick paint layer button, and that creates a new thick paint layer. There's a list of recent brushes up here at the top. If you wanted to search for a particular brush, you can go to window and then search. If you're looking for mountain knife, I could type in mountain and there's my mountain knife. So that's a general overview of the content in my workspace, but let's take a look at a few of the new brushes now. Many of the blenders that use liquid or drip technology have been updated, so you'll be able to use those on a blank layer, and they'll also blend with transparency much nicer than they did in previous versions of Painter. A lot of the blenders and some of the other brushes have random grain properties enabled, and I'm still working on updating some of these brushes, but I've updated about 20 or so of them. So let's go ahead and start with glazing chalk. I'll also open up the green panel here, and you'll notice that in Curl Painter 2018, we now have random grain rotation and random grain position. These are very helpful for these particular brushes because these chalk brushes really work well to utilize the grain. So for example, I'm going to select a paper texture called Pebble Board, and I'm going to turn up the scale and the contrast of that paper, and I'm going to turn off random grain rotation real quick. This is how the brush worked prior to Corel Painter 2018. If I keep painting strokes over and over again in the same spot, that pattern doesn't change, which really doesn't work for me. I wish I could change up that pattern a bit and make it more random. And now in Painter 2018, I can. So I'm going to turn on random grain rotation. Let's paint a similar stroke. I'm going to lift up my pen, paint another stroke. And you can see that it's building up on itself. It's retaining that same pattern. It's just stacking it on itself and moving it around. And so I'm getting a much more organic looking result when I paint with this brush now. Versus if I turn that off and I paint, I'm always getting that static texture. And you may want to use either of these effects. And so you have that option of going here into the grain and just turning that on and off. But I think it works pretty well to keep it on, so I'm going to leave that on. Now, because it's also nice to have the random grain position enabled, I've created a variant of this brush, which is called Random Chalk. Same basic brush, but it has both of these properties enabled. And that gives me a result that looks something like this. Again, if I turn those off and I do that same stroke, I'm getting something much different. So this kind of brush would work particularly well for painting trees and things like that. This is a really nice brush. And depending on what you set your paper texture to, you're going to get some different results. For example, if I select a different texture like the small dots, then I'm getting a different pattern when I'm painting. Another nice thing that you can do with these brushes, since they're glazing brushes, is you can enable a merge mode here. So I could set this to multiply, and then I can automatically build up that color darker and darker. If I want it to get lighter as I paint, I can set it to screen, and then it gets lighter and lighter as I paint. So it gives me a lot of versatility with these brushes. Moving on to the next brush that's been updated, that is the sponge. And the sponge has random grain rotation and random grain position. So when I'm painting with this, I'm getting a much more organic result, and it's not a static repetitive pattern. Now let's move on to some of the blenders. I'm going to try coarse oily blender. Random grain rotation has been added to this brush. It's also a liquid drip brush. So that's been enhanced as well. And if I blend with this, you can see that I'm getting this nice broken pattern. This particular brush is also using a dab stencil, which is set to the flow map. So if I look in flow maps, I can control that dab stencil here, and that'll give me a different result. Now what's interesting about this brush is because it's set to random grain rotation, I'm able to build up these strokes upon themselves. If I turn off random grain rotation and I do that, you can see it doesn't layer up quite as much. So I feel like this really helps this brush to look a lot more organic when you're blending with it. 
I've also performed similar updates to Just Add Water, Coarse Smear Blender Jitter, Speckle Diffuse Blur, and Coarse Oily Blender Speckle. Now let's take a look at Oily Blender. Oily Blender has been greatly improved. Now I get this really nice oily pastel effect, and it works really well for blending. I like this brush a lot. So that's it for the blenders. Let's move on to the palette knives. Loaded palette knife has been tweaked just a bit. So has texture knife and rough glazing knife. For example, with rough glazing knife, I've added random grain rotation. So I can build up these strokes upon themselves rather than getting a consistent pattern every time, just like with the chalk brush. The mountain knife has been tweaked just a bit. These dab knife brushes are using the liquid drip technology. So those have been greatly improved. For example, the sergeant knife can now paint on a blank layer. So you see I've created a new layer here and I'm able to use a liquid drip brush. And that's something you couldn't do prior to Corel Painter 2018. That gives me these really nice liquidy effects here. So I can kind of blend and paint at the same time. Let's move on down to thick paint. And here I have three new custom brushes that I created. First is broken paint. And this gives us a nice broken paint effect. Now the trick for this brush is to press down lightly. The lighter you press, the more the paint is going to break. If you press down hard, you're going to build up really, really thick paint. When you've built up the thick paint, you can also go over it again with light pressure to scrape it away and remove some of the extra paint. If I keep going over it with light pressure, I start to kind of chip away at it. Now the texture that you're getting here is defined by your paper grain. So if I change this from pebble board to small dots, you can see that I'm getting a much different texture here. And so you can go between all these different textures or you can edit them to make them bigger or smaller and you can get a lot of versatility in your strokes. If you have a Wacom art pen, you can also rotate the angle of your Wacom art pen to change the angle of your strokes. The next brush we'll look at is broken paint remover. And this lets us remove paint. I'm going to use a really small brush. And you can see I can go in here and kind of chip away at it and add a little bit of texture to this paint. I can also open my thick paint media panel and I can further refine this brush. For example, I can increase the rate and then I get a much more noticeable result. Keep increasing the rate and I get bigger and bigger chunks that I can take out of my paint. But you can see that when I'm taking chunks out of the paint, it's still leaving that nice three-dimensional edge. The size of my brush also influences the result that I get. Let's move on to the next brush, which is Broken Paint Blender. And this essentially lets you blend paint into pre-existing paint. So you can see here, I can kind of add in some purple to this to tint it a bit. So I'm using kind of lighter pressure and then tapering off my pressure. If I want it to be really thick, I'll use very firm pressure and build it up and then lighter pressure to kind of taper it off. I can also use it just to put down paint if I want to paint with it. And then as you can see, I can begin to introduce other colors into it. And the final brush palette that we'll look at over here on the left is the texture palette. And this includes a couple of selection brushes. These are default selection brushes. Selection brushes can paint selection. So for example, I can make a nice big cloudy area like this as a selection. And then I could use that to either paint into, or I could use the interactive gradient tool to put in a gradient like that. So you might ask, why are these selection brushes within the texture? Well, that's because I'm probably more than likely going to use them for texturing things. And I also didn't want to create a new palette just for two brushes. So with the splatter selection, you can see I can put in this splattery selection here and I can hit delete. And I've created a little bit of texture by using that selection to subtract from the paint. So that's why they're in the texture palette for now. So there's fractal selection and splatter selection, two very helpful brushes. I know this video is already long enough, so I will let you download this workspace and explore a bit. You can also watch many of my older videos, which cover how to use a lot of the brushes that I didn't show you today. But the last brush that I want to look at is an image hose nozzle. That's over here in the nozzle libraries under painterly. Down at the bottom, it is heavy paint. And these image hose nozzles are compatible with all versions of Corel Painter. And this heavy paint brush is essentially something that kind of simulates the thick paint. And I made this brush for people who don't have Corel Painter 2018 yet, who want to be able to paint with brushes that are similar to thick paint. So I'm going to select the heavy paint nozzle. And I also have to select an image hose brush to control how that nozzle comes out of it. So down here at the bottom of the icon, it says paint break, and that's suggesting that I should use the paint break brush. So I'm going to select that. I'll go ahead and paint a brush stroke. And you can see that I'm getting black right now. If I want to change that color, I need to click here on the additional color, which is the little dot in the background here. And then I can change that to blue or pink or any color that I want. 
Now this isn't exactly like the thick paint feature that you get in Corel Painter 2018. It's just kind of faking it. It's not as dynamic and you can't build it up and scrape it away, but you can get kind of a broken edge effect like this. You can also try some of the other brushes. For example, I could try linear size P angle D, and then I'm painting with it just in grayscale. If I wanted to, I could also create a separate layer, set it to overlay, and I could use this brush just to add texture to a painting. If I make my brush bigger, I get bigger, broader texture like this. If I make my brush smaller, I get smaller, finer texture. So that's a fun little brush for you to play with in Corel Painter 2017 and older. So there you go, that's my tour of my custom workspace for Corel Painter. Again, you can get that from my website, aaronrutten.com, by becoming my VIP patron on patreon.com slash aaronrutten. If you enjoyed this video, take a quick second to click the like button, and if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more Corel Painter videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.